you drive along, <laughs> going 80 miles an hour, and that's the speed limit. Oh, it's so nice. You're cruising along, and you're actually making time as you have this desolate, barren, vast, beautiful, scenic, and eye candy type drive. You see all these buttes of them deep canyons and mesas all around you as you're cruising along in Utah. What a dry, desolate place. The skin on your hands is almost cracking as you see the moisture psh, 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 be pulled away. It's true. And that's very different than where we're at now. But with it, there are some beautiful scenic elements. We came across this prairie and all of a sudden we stopped at this visitor center in this Goblin Valley State Park. Um, my fiance Heather has been there before for 30 minutes and she's like, it's the most amazing place I've ever going again. <laughs> uh, I'm excited, but she's hyped us up for three and a half years. Three and a half years of hearing about this place. That sets a pretty high bar. Mm -hmm. And in those three and a half years, until the day of, I didn't know she only had been there for 30 minutes. <laughs> I thought she was there for like days exploring this place. Like, 30 minutes? So we saw the visitor center, it's cool. We see a couple of little weird sculpture type elements, natural sculptures on our way in. And then we get to the crest of this hill and you look out and there's just this kind of small valley filled with the most weird, indescribable formations of sandstone, mud, of rock. And they are piled on top of each other. They are stacked four or five high. And it makes no sense at all because gravity should affect them. And somehow it doesn't. All of the time. These weird mounds, it's like you went to the beach, you're playing in a sandbox, and you just stack sand however you want. But when you stack it, it just moves together. And it doesn't fall apart right away. This amazing natural formation was from years and years of beaches, and the bottom elements of a, a oceanic plain going and layering up and weird currents going on. So your different strata layers don't line up the same way. And not everything is uniform. Sometimes you can see the layers of it, but within it there's like spirals and circles and changes of the density between them. And so with it, this whole, whole zone in Utah and Colorado was lifted up through tectonic forces, where they play tectonics mixed with some magma going on, and you have these really cool landscape features that are just phenomenal to behold. And then you have lots of water for a while, and then you have flash floods. Now, how many people have been a part of a flash flood? Like, seen a flash flood? Okay, there's so nobody here. In the desert, you will go, and John probably has a few times, in the desert, you will go, you'll have no rain for most of the year, maybe the entire year, maybe multiple years. And then all of a sudden, you will get this downpour, maybe in like one square mile. Sometimes you can see this giant <laughs> cloud structure and just this <sighs> column of rain. And you're like, wow, I don't know if I want to be in that. But no, I, it's really hot. I would like to be in that. But that will happen. And then anything downstream of that, and you have these enormous, uh, river valleys, uh, normally arroyos, it's a dry riverbed, but these enormous drainages, sometimes like 50 square miles. And if you get this done, all of a sudden, all of that is focused and funneled down into these arroyos, into these canyons. And you'll have 20, 30 feet high of water, and maybe 100, 200 feet wide, all going down, and it will move boulders the size of school buses and freight trains. Hmm. It's wild, the power of water. Well, in this environment in Cabo Valley, this power of water has flowed through these really weird different uh, formations of rock and eroded away so that you have all of these weird things standing up. That mixed with wind kicking up the dust and abrading. So natural sandpaper going on and buffing and changing and adapting these shapes. So as you wander through this maze of pieces stacked high as can be, some of them just are high, and it looks like the face of something. Maybe mm -hmm. the face of a creature. Maybe the face of a dragon. Maybe the face of a goblin. The 
this is a really weird little zone. Like, we got the chance to play in it. And Heather and I are playing, and it is like we're little kids again. Just <laughs> jumping through the zones. And you're allowed to touch these, you're allowed to stand on them, you're allowed to move around on them, because they're constantly eroding. You're not really, it's, there isn't a lot of plant life, there's not really a lot to be harmed by it. Now, they are, mankind is definitely adding to the erosion of these, but as it happens, they're becoming even more beautiful in their own way. And there's three different valleys. Most people only go in the little valley. It's right by the visitor center. And you go down and it's 100 yards away. And so you can go in and you can wander around through these things. We decided to go to the second valley and try to get to the third. We had a limited time frame because we had to get a flight. This was yesterday. So we had to get the catch a flight out. So we had like four hours to play. And so we're going around and made it to valley number two. And we get into valley number two. And it is just a maze. And we're constantly getting a little bit higher and going, uh, let's <laughs> way back out. Let's not get lost. And we're going to wander through the stuff. There's no trail. It's all just wherever people yeah. decided to go. Yeah. Now we're in the middle of this and we're imagining playing a giant game of tag. Just going back and forth, being able to tag each other and run and hide. And yeah. I think you can have a group of 500 people and you might get lost. <laughs> if you were not focused on where you were in that zone, you might get lost. But if you kind of follow the flow of the water because it goes downhill, you'll get to this little uh, arroyo that has some steep sides about the height of these tables, maybe a little bit higher in different zones, but that kind of is your path out of that area. So I encourage you, if you get the chance, when you're in Utah, go to this thing that is relatively unknown. This area that isn't Arches National Park where you have a million plus visitors a year. Instead, the visitors to Gotham Valley are in the thousands. Now, there were a few cars when we were there, but once we got into the hoodoos, and that's what it's called when they're stacked up in these weird formations. That's why we have hoodoo ski basin up here, is because you'll get these formations formed in snow, and that the wind will carve them and it will be really neat. But this hoodoo hoodoo will keep you entranced, will keep you entertained, and it will let out your inner child. As you're going through life, I encourage you to find these little zones that are not the normal places everybody goes. Look up your state parks, look up little manual or little guidebooks, and find the out of the way places, because sometimes those are the most beautiful. So when you're doing this, go explore, bring the right gear, and make sure that you are prepared for the adventure, but also the problem. <laughs>